Hey guys, Quip the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to my balcony. Today we're going to talk about Nina's three-point uh, polar alignment plugin and we're going to have fun. So first things first, a few prerequisites. You need to have the plugin installed. To do so, you want to make sure to go into the plugins in Nina. Under Available, you click on three-point polar alignment and you make sure to click Install. This will require you to restart Nina. Also, keep it updated as often as you can. Um, once it's installed, it should appear under the installed here. You can access it from imaging and there's a tab three point polar alignment. If you don't see this tab, uh, there's an icon here at the top right, three point polar alignment. Clicking it will make the tab appear or disappear. Um, so that's how you get access to it. But before you start, some more prerequisites. You need to be in focus uh, because this relies on plate solving. So plate solving needs to be both possible and accurate so you need to be in focus second you need a go-to mount or at least a mount that can um, pivot around the ra axis and uh, for those mounts you can use manual mode um, and you also need and i re i mean you don't need but i recommend that you set your mount limits and your horizon limits properly because i think this procedure if used um, incorrectly could make your telescope crash into the tripod not sure but uh, i would be just careful just in case there is a play stop button that you can press at any time as well uh, before we start i am going to unpark my mount just so that we're ready to actually uh, go through with the procedure um, now we have tons of little settings here and a lot of them are actually important but i think it should work for a lot of people with the default settings but let's go a bit through uh, the main ones but be even before that the um, process is your mount will point somewhere will take an exposure plate solve it will move across the RA axis by a certain number of degrees, take another exposure, exposure, plate solve, and do that once more in the same direction again, take another exposure, plate solve. And then it will have determined the uh, polar misalignment that you have as well as how much you need to move the mount to get back to perfect polar alignment. And you might have noticed that in the first step, I said the mount will point somewhere because yes, it doesn't have to be pointing near Polaris. You can use this in a place where you do not have visual uh, on Polaris. And that is absolutely awesome. And the first point that Nina will be slewing the sc scope to is determined by those coordinates uh, here, altitude and azimuth. Um, and I'm keeping them to the default settings, I believe. I don't think I changed them. Um, and that's where it will point at the start but you can really look at you know a sky safari or some other planetarium look at where you want it to point and then where you want it to like move around in terms of taking the exposures now after it's gone to this point it will take an exposure plate solve we can see it's going to take five seconds to play solve. You can also select the filter that you want to use. I will use the luminance filter. Right now, there's absolutely no filter in here. I removed the L extreme. And you can also specify the measure point distance. This is the number of degrees that the mount will rotate around the RA axis between uh, two measurements. So if I set 20 degrees here, it means the mount in total from its starting point of the coordinates that I've set will rotate 40 degrees. So I need to make sure that I have enough space for that. And that all across those 40 degrees, there is access to the sky for the mount to actually take an exposure and plate solve. Uh, and the direction it will, in which the mount rotates is determined by this direction east, uh, on or off. Uh, right now I have it off, so the mount will go to a point and then it will rotate 20 degrees this direction, 20 degrees again, and it will be done. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is. So let's click the play button and see what happens. So first, as I was saying, the mount will point to the initial point, which in my case happens to be near Polaris. I'm really hoping that the light will not interfere too much with, um, with the plate solving. We'll see. Okay, we've slewed where I wanted to slew. Now the telescope will settle. I have a settle time of 15 seconds. Then it will expose for five seconds and we'll do a plate solving. Let's wait until that's done. Okay, it managed the plate solving. So we can see retrieving first measurement point is now checked green. And we're going towards the second measure measurement point, which is 20 degrees away. We're now on it. 
we are waiting for the mount to settle. Once it's settled, a second exposure will be taken and plate solved. Okay, and we're done with the second point. Now Nina is doing the third point. This is all automated. I'm not touching anything. I'm just ready to stop if something goes wrong. Now we are settling the uh, mount. Then we'll take the last exposure and we'll see what our error in polar alignment is. And you can see that Nina has now finished, completed, and it is now exposing for five seconds in a loop so that it can plate solve each time and tell you your total error. It's also telling me that my azimuth error, my azimuth is actually very, very close. I would need to move left a tiny bit. I'm not going to touch that for now. Um, what is wrong seems to be my altitude. I'm off by um, eight minutes, eight, eight arc minutes, and I need to move it up. So I'm going to try that and see what happens. Okay, I moved the mount up, but you can see I went overkill. We're now 21 minutes over. So I went a bit uh, too ham on it. Let's be a bit gentler this time. Okay, let's see where we are. So we need to wait until the next exposure. Okay, we're better. We're still worse than we were at the, at the start. Plus I moved also, like the mount and the tripod are very easy to move. It's very difficult to actually properly polar align this mount. Um, so I'm waiting uh, to see like how, how close I can get it. Wow, okay, I got it very, very close. Now I need to move it up again, apparently. Uh, but like we're at only one arc minute distance, which is so much better. Okay, still getting better, 49 arc seconds. Can we do better? Now I need to move up again. There's just not enough precision with that lever, but let's try it. Okay, and I think we've got it. Uh, we've got it, an error of 34 arc seconds. This is great. What I'm gonna do now is compare it to SharpCap, see what SharpCap says. Hopefully it works, we'll see. Okay, and now I turned off the light so you can probably not see me anymore, but we'll be checking what we get in Nina with uh, SharpCap. So let's try that. So I'm in SharpCap and I'm doing the uh, polar alignment routine. I'll have now to rotate the RA axis. So I am going to go in here. The speed is set to maximum. And actually I'm going to rotate in the other direction. And we're going to see whether SharpCap confirms or disagrees with Nina's um, uh, judgment. <laughs> and SharpCap seems to disagree a little bit. So it's interesting. I am not sure. Um, who to trust. So let's, I'm gonna um, close the camera in SharpCap and try again in Nina. Okay, and I'm back in Nina. We can see that in Nina, the polar alignment error is very small. In SharpCap, uh, it was uh, six minutes. So which one to trust? <laughs> uh, I do not know, uh, but I'll just trust Nina for now. I don't mind even if it's like six minutes off. And we'll see. I mean, overall, obviously, I just wanted to see how the three-point polar alignment works. I'm pretty sure that um, the, even if like sharp, sharp cap is right and Nina is wrong, we're still in a very um, small zone of error, small margin of error of a, a few arc minutes at most for polar alignment, which is better than what you ever get with a polar scope, right? So we're still being spoiled a lot. And I know that people have noticed um, discrepancies with SharpCap and Ioptron iPolar as well, for instance. So there's always uh, stuff going on. Who to trust, I don't know. The best way to check would be to use drift alignment in PHD2, uh, but I don't want to spend time on that today. Uh, I just wanted to really show the process in Nina. It's a simple process. It's super cool. It works very well as far as I can tell. It's very easy to follow and you can see it was a matter of a few minutes. So yeah, I'm loving it. And um, I'll do a, um, a drift alignment at some point to see uh, whether Nina is more right than SharpCap. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and we'll, see. we'll see who wins at some point. But I think going forward for polar alignment, I'm gonna go for Nina. It's just like, it's just too convenient and it's free. So yeah, that's all that I wanted to show today. I really love this new plugin in Nina. I'm so happy with it. So happy to see Nina still like blazing forward 
so awesome. Um, so I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Um, if you like the video, uh, feel free to leave a like down below, leave a comment as well as about, like, for example, why Sharp Cap and Nina would have different uh, figures there. Um, and also, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you like this kind of stuff about astrophotography, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button. But as always, more important than that, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.